Good morning and welcome to the Daily Summation Podcast from Kurt's Religion and Politics. I'm your host, I'm Kurt, and glad to see you this morning. Today is the uh, 24th of October. It is a Saturday today, 24th of October, 2020. Uh, welcome aboard if you're joining me on Rumble, if you're joining me on YouTube, or if you are checking me out on the podcast. Welcome aboard there as well. Uh, you might have noticed there's a difference in my logo if you're seeing me lots of places, and that's because I I had to fall or redesign essentially slightly my logo. I did that because um, you can't get resolution back. It's an old it's an old concept in in uh, various kinds of graphic uh, graphic con graphic things, right? You can't get res resolution back. So when I designed my orig original logo, it was too small. I designed a new one. It's much bigger than the old one was, and so it's going to be much crisper in various applications, including the beginning of the video and so forth. So I just wanted to point out that that was, that was the case. Okay, today I am talking about a blog post that I did uh, late last night uh, convers called Conversations, a Two-Way Street. And I just wanted to sort of discuss that idea a little bit. And I wanted to kind of start by saying that if you are prone to treat conversation as either something where you completely listen to someone else and shut up and don't do anything, um, or you are prone to motor mouth and step over the top of everybody around you when you're talking, you're probably losing a good deal of the really good, you know, really promising, really useful aspects of communication of conversation, okay? The first of these two is better than the second. It's better that you sit back and listen and 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 sort of take things in than that you than that you talk. But even so, even if you're not uh, involving yourself in the conversation in the in the dialogue in the back and forth, you're you're kind of losing out and you and you really need to start getting more involved in that regard. Obviously, if you don't feel like you have anything to say or to add or whatever, it's totally understandable that for a time at least, you kind of don't talk when somebody else is, you know, or go back and forth with somebody. Uh, in general, my attitude is if you don't have anything to say, you're maybe not looking at things quite as well as you should be lots of the time. That's not always true. Sometimes you'll find that there are things you just don't have anything more that you want to add or whatever to that thing. But the thing about it is there are a series of problems that I've come across in communication, right? One of them is <clears throat> that um, when I communicate with certain people, they communicate from a sort of a childlike place. And it's a, I guess it's sort of a sign of maturity. And when you're dealing with children, you should expect that. That's something you, you should expect. They're going to deal with the world from a sort of a childlike perspective. When you deal with adults, on the other hand, as a rule, that's not something you should kind of expect. It's maybe something particularly for males that you say into teenage that you see into teenage years and maybe even into adulthood, uh, but uh, a little bit, you know, into their twenties. By the time they're thirty something, if they're still doing things that are that are very immature uh, in conversation, it's darn hard to talk to those individuals. Another problem that I see is that when I bring up facts, just speaking how I normally do, and I. I know, I have to give this warning. Look, my dad was a college lecturer, and my mom taught at a college, collegiate level in the United States, university collegiate level in the United States, and it means that I'm prone to both motor mouth a little bit and to sound impressive when I talk to lots of people. That's just true, but the thing that you have to understand is people are people, and you can't allow them to run over the top of you. You have to, you have to just assume that they're going to do what they're going to do and be what they're going to be. And you have to do likewise. You have to be the, the person that you are. And that just be, even if you're not that person who's really great at, at voicing their opinions and so forth, that doesn't mean you shouldn't voice them. You definitely should. But the thing that I see or that I, I guess you could say that I hear from people is it's nigh unto abuse when I come up with facts and I state them in sort of the normal way I talk. And I get it. It sounds like I'm very animated and very emotional at times. And I have to tell you that that's not true a lot of the time. It's not so true. It's just that I've been brought up to communicate in a certain mode. And you can get 
through that by just being yourself, thinking for yourself, working things out, and talking things out. I'm not trying to abuse you in any way, and I don't think anybody else is. I don't generally have a problem with that. Every once in a while, I'll have somebody who I who I see will be trying to bully me or whatever. Had somebody try to do that the other day. But the truth of the matter, my attitude is my attitude was, yeah, so. I mean, if somebody tries to physically bully you or whatever, then that's probably a person that the best thing to do with is not to communicate with them at all. If you can avoid it, walk away, get away from them. But if a person tries to do things that are abusive in the way they're dealing with the world, the best you can do in most circumstances is just not let it phase you. And I know that's a hard thing to do. And when you're younger or, or, or prone to emotion, you know, being emotional or whatever, that's a hard thing to do. But you have to get to that point where you can do that. So my point there is, look, you may think that me bringing up facts, me being willing to counter argue what you're saying and so forth, uh, me be speaking in a fairly authoritative sounding way means that I'm trying to bully you or I'm trying to abuse you in some fashion. Let me assure you that for many of us out there, we have no such uh, desire, no such in inkling or, in you know, or whatever you want to say. Another thing that I talk about, and it's sort, it can be sort of related, is people who shut other people down or off in their minds, right? Look, when somebody talks to you, what they say may be total rubbish. On the other hand, it may not. And the problem is if you just shut them down without considering what they're saying, without parsing apart what they're saying and looking at it and seeing what it actually is, the chances are pretty good what's going to happen is over the course of time, you're going to miss all kinds of things. This is a part of fruitful communication. If you're not taking in what other people are putting out, then you're missing things. Now, that doesn't mean, and I've said this in other things, that doesn't mean you assume, oh, everything they're saying is true and correct. It just means you listen to what they're saying, you pay it mind, and like everybody, you pass it through the various lenses uh, that, that you uh, have in place. And it's nice if you're aware of them. It's nice if you're, if you know what your bias looks like, what your, what your, uh, what your, you know, ways of looking at the world look like so that you can know, well, I'm potentially going to be biased in this way. Right. And it's also important to realize that even if some, even if say, for example, the main point of what somebody is saying is biased, that doesn't mean nothing good is going to come out of the communication or conversation with that individual. That's not what that means. Discussion is still a good thing, even in those instances. So shutting a person off in your mind is really, really not a great thing to do. Now, there are a number of other things that I came up with, right? And I'm, and I'm kind of struggling at the moment to think of what they were. But there are any number of obstacles, potential obstacles to, to communi communication, right? That's a definite thing. And you need to know that they're there. And you, like me, I think, unless you're really good at at communication, at, at the back and forth. I think pretty much all of us need to work on clearing those obstacles to communication. And some of them, it's very hard to find ways to do that. So one of the things that I point out is I've gotten into the habit with certain people of asking questions rather than making statements with the idea that those individuals can answer the questions and that I should honestly listen to what they're answering and that I should try and figure out where they are and what they're saying based on that and that I shouldn't try to necessarily lead conversation by doing that, right? So for me, what I find is if I say, if I say this is this, lots of times people will have a hard time with that. But, I, but if I say, what do you think about this? People will say, well, I think this and I think that. And I can say, well, what about this? And they'll say, well, this and that. And, and the point is the conversation typically will go a lot more smoothly if people don't feel like they're being railroaded into a particular position. Okay, I'm uh, about to the point where I, you know, I would normally cut things off because I'm over, over nine and a half minutes. And so I'm going to go ahead and call it good here. Uh, I definitely appreciate people tuning in. I know I've sounded probably pretty rep uh, repetitive of late, but remember, in this case, the point that I'm trying to make is that conversation is a two-way street and that you need to be ready to both listen and to talk in conversation. Okay, uh, starting to cool down a little bit here, but we're still having, a so far, a pretty good day. I'm still having a pretty good day, 
and I hope you're doing well as well. Hopefully we will see you again tomorrow. That'll be Sunday the 25th of 2020. If we do not, it will be Monday the 26th of 2020 instead that we'll see you. Hey, I got the dates right today. That's an amazing thing. That doesn't always happen, as you probably know uh, if you've been watching my videos for very long. All right, you have a great day, and hopefully we will see you again tomorrow. Thanks for checking out this video. Remember that you can like it on YouTube and you can give it a rumble on Rumble if you want to do that. Uh, I have channels on both YouTube and Rumble. They are the Kurtz Religion and Politics channels. You can subscribe to either one of those if you want to do so. Remember, if you subscribe on YouTube, you probably want to click the notification bell in order to be notified of new content. Um, if you want to see more from me, you can check me out on my blog, that's blogs.kpshubert.com, blogs.kpshubert.com. You can also see my Facebook page, that is uh, Kurtz Religion and Politics on Facebook. You can check out my Twitter, Twitter, uh, Parlor, and Minds.com accounts. My handle on all three of those is at kpshubert, that's at kpshubert. You can um, check out my podcast. The podcast is at podcasts.kpshubert.com. That's podcasts.kpshubert.com. And finally, you can check me out on Patreon. And if you want to support me, that's probably one of the better places that you can do that. I am Kurt's Religion and Politics there. Thanks again for checking out this video, and hopefully we will see you again tomorrow.